It's a crucial weekend in the Toyo Tyres MSA British Rallycross Championship because here at Pembrey it is day two of a double header. There are more points on offer today. Yesterday was all action. Mark Higgins versus Ollie O'Donovan in the final. There was contact early on though. Julian Godfrey and Mark Higgins got together. Both suffered a puncture. Higgins' damage was worse and as he dropped to the very back and then retired from the race, Ollie O'Donovan fended off the challenge of Steve Hill to come through not only for victory but for an all-important second win of the season. In the championship, O'Donovan now three points up on Mark Higgins. He in turn is two ahead of Julian Godfrey with Steve Hill fourth and Roger Thomas fifth. Day two here at Pembrey means we run the circuit in the opposite direction. Away from the start, turn sharp right now through Ollies, then towards the loose, there's the Joe lap to contend with, two hairpins as well, and the fast tarmac section. Ollie O'Donovan, victory here at Pembrey in round four. You're leading the championship, the first double win of the season. What are your hopes for today in round five? Well, Harl, I mean, it's very early in the morning, yes. The sun is shining, everything is looking good, car's feeling good. Um, I'd like to make sure I stay on the podium all day if I can, Let's try and stay in the top three for the hunt. Uh, we've got Kevin Proctor joining us again today, so it'll be another car contention for a fight. Um, important to try and stay at the front row for a final. Uh, obviously, pole is best, but uh, you know, we'll just play all day and try and protect the car for the final. Kevin Proctor, you've missed the last couple of rounds. Gearbox issues early in the season, they sorted here for Pembrey? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, we've, we've done some work on the gearbox and hopefully it's going to be okay today. Um, yeah, just looking forward to going racing again. You were quite fast at this circuit last year, you had some technical problems, but you, you liked it. What are your expectations for today? Well, it's a complete, a complete different way around. It's a complete new circuit. Just have to wait and see. But I'm sure I can be as quick as everybody else. Starting on the middle of the front row for the first qualifier, in these situations where you're in one group of cars, really important to be at the front, to try and stay at the front throughout the day in qualifying. Yeah, certainly. But at the end of the day, um, if I have a few technical problems, I, as long as I do, I'm consistent, I should still get into a final, and then that's when the, the work has to be done. The car's on the grid, ready for Q1. It's blast off and a good start by Roger Thomas, the man from pole position. Ollie O'Donovan goes with him, but Steve Hill in the blue Mitsubishi Lancer there drops to the back of the pack. Roger Thomas was on the podium yesterday, had a great run on home soil. They swing their way then through that ride of Ollie's for the first time. Julian Godfrey's view here. Is he going to go for the Joker lap? Yes, he is. He goes straight on as O'Donovan elbows his way up alongside Thomas. No, you don't, says Roger. So the red focus understeers its way towards us, still in the lead. Ollie O'Donovan in second place in the Tony Bardi prepared car. And then for Albertech Racing, it's Mark Higgins third. Fourth is Kevin Proctor. We've not seen enough of Kev the Rev this year. He's always quick. What can he do here this weekend now? O'Donovan has a look up the inside, coming towards the Brooklyn's hairpin. He can't find a way past Thomas, who goes a little bit deep into the corner. O'Donovan almost alongside him now. Higgins looks for a way by. Out of Toyos and then up towards centre as they go. The two Fords lean on each other, both get sideways. A huge moment for Thomas. Higgins clatters up the inside, goes ahead of O'Donovan. Thomas is out wide. O'Donovan's back through into the lead of the race. Fantastic! Proctor goes for the Joker and O'Donovan just somehow hangs onto the race lead. Mark Higgins behind him and Roger Thomas, the one that came off way worse there. On board with Steve Hill now, almost into the back of the traffic ahead. O'Donovan wide out of the hairpin, Mark Higgins right with him. Higgins retired yesterday, a puncture and then lots of damage, so he desperately needs points today. You're on board the Peugeot 208 now. O'Donovan ahead of the former multiple British rally champion. Out of Toyos they come and then on towards Senna's speed building, fast part of the circuit this. And then you turn sharp left going through Ollies. Higgins across the loose, is he going to joke at this time? Let's see. O'Donovan serves the Joker instead. That's going to give Higgins a free ride for the moment. So he's going to push, push, push and try and build up a big advantage to consolidate that when he jokers. There is Julian Godfrey trying to stay alongside O'Donovan who breaks, breaks so, so late. He goes through and in fact there's contact behind as Proctor look bounces off the side of Godfrey. Julian Godfrey, I'm afraid, after his big crash at Croft and a puncture yesterday has got damage again and it was O'Donovan that came up the inside and rather triggered that. Here's the replay, on board with O'Donovan, look, so he comes back on after the Joker. He's desperate to get ahead of Godfrey, he breaks so late, goes up the inside, there's a bit of contact, and here comes Proctor, bang, into the side of Godfrey. 
big drama and it means that Mark Higgins now is away and clear up front. Here he comes through the Toyo section. The car penduluming left and right, losing a little bit of momentum as it does so, scrubbing off speed as it does so. But Mark Higgins, don't forget, not only rally crosser, rally champion, but stunt driver as well, now giving a perfect exhibition of car control. He's on the limit and the car just a joy to watch. O'Donovan, after his rather busy race, is chasing on behind him as Higgins goes for the joker and stays ahead. That is crucial. Mark Higgins stays ahead. He goes very, very deep, though, approaching Paddock and just gets it all back under control to hang on to the race lead with half a lap to run. O'Donovan riding shotgun here but losing out on acceleration. Higgins is away. Up through the gears goes Ollie O'Donovan towards the Brooklyn Tappin. Mark Higgins, it is then the man that won the final at Lydon. He leads here at Pembrey and it looks as though he's on target for a win in Q1. O'Donovan is going to be second, but Mark Higgins puts himself as the fastest driver in the first qualifying round. Roger Thomas fends off Steve Hill behind. An action-packed start to the day. Mark Higgins the fastest ahead of Ollie O'Donovan, Roger Thomas third and Steve Hill fourth. But dramas for Julian Godfrey, Kevin Proctor and Nigel Burke Subaru. Mark, your first season of Rallycross, you're running right to the front of this championship, but you haven't had that many fastest times. So great to start your, your event here at round five with a, a quickest time and a win in Q1. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I mean, we started on the back. Um, I think we were quick all day yesterday, but we just got caught in a little bit of traffic. So when we had a clear run, we had good times. Um, it's trying to get the combination of the times over the whole heat rather than just on the lap. So uh, that, that was good for us and, and very important because uh, round four, you know, it, it did cost us not get, being able to get clear. So uh, to have a good run on the first heat from the back of the, the grid was very important for us. And a technical circuit here, difficult to overtake, so crucial for you to be at the front of the grid for the following qualifiers. Yeah, it is, and the joke is so short as well. It's only like two seconds, so uh, if you have a bad lap caught in traffic, the joke is not really going to gain you much. So uh, you've got to get out front, uh, get a good start, and the start's very tricky here. It's on a corner straight away, which I think is the only circuit in the country that has one like that, uh, and that causes a few issues sometimes. Steve Hill, a good one in Q1 here at round five, fourth place, but uh, the boys are working hard. What's wrong with the car? Uh, the clutch failed on the start line, so we, we, we ran without clutch, but we have particular dogs in our gearbox that make the gears hang on. So on the downshift, we just need to use a little bit of clutch. It helps us hold the gears in, but um, also on the downshift, by using the clutch, you release the gear. So I was stuck in fourth gear for the first lap and eventually worked our way around it just by being a bit slower on the change. And um, the boys are changing the, uh, it's, a, it's a slave cylinder that's gone in the clutch, so they're changing that now. So good lam damage limitation in uh, Q1 to, to get fourth time when other people have problems? I think so and I think um, you know other people were bumping into each other and I probably would have been in the mix there so maybe it's a good thing. We're ready here at Pembrey for Q2. The supercars are on the line. Mark Higgins makes an absolute rocket ship start but Ollie O'Donovan goes with him around the outside. Julian Godfrey gets up on the inside as best he can. Then the real estate disappears. Roger Thomas slots in behind. Steve Hill missing from this second race has to watch on from the paddock seeing Mark Higgins lead the way then across the loose they come for the first time in the dust storm behind him is O'Donovan Kevin Proctor goes for the joker lap to get that out of the way early on and then he can concentrate on fighting back in the race Higgins comes through Carter's hairpin wide goes O'Donovan is that going to give Julian Godfrey a chance to get up the inside not really did think about it but he hasn't got the drive out of the corner Mark Higgins is looking good then as he pendulums through Toyos and the Brooklyn's hairpin here. This is Toyos and again look at the way the car dances left and right. Clip the curb, heading through Senna's and then on towards Ollie's. Double OD, Ollie O'Donovan is there in second spot and third is Julian Godfrey. Now what about Proctor as he tries to catch up of course, everybody ahead will have to joker. Julian Godfrey goes for it this time, the joker lap is the longer and the slower lap there to shuffle the order to try and produce a bit of strategic racing into Rallycross and also to facilitate some overtaking which on some circuits is easier said than done especially with one line across the loose sections of circuits this is O'Donovan's view we're enjoying a great season within the Toyo Tyres MSA British Rallycross Championship and so far here at Pembrey this weekend this new circuit new configuration of circuit has given us some great racing it's been a real hit a new Pembrey this year on the calendar, a completely new venue, of course, in Silverstone. It's becoming a golden age, this, for British Rallycross, with new circuits and plenty of great racing and new drivers and new cars coming in as well. O'Donovan goes for the joker lap this time. Higgins is away and gone up front. O'Donovan drifts off the line, onto the grass, back on again, and stays ahead there, look. 
Julian Godfrey slots in behind him as the Mitsubishi bounces its way across the loose. Kevin Proctor is next in the queue. And Kevin, not really, he's playing the pace he would have wanted, nor you might have expected. You see how dusty it is as well. Everybody following a car ahead, sitting in that dust cloud. Mark Higgins then with the best visibility of all is away and gone. That dust brought back onto the tarmac, makes it slippery. Out of Brooklyn's into Toyo's now. Back up towards the long left-hander at Senna's. Ollie O'Donovan chases Mark Higgins, who is hoping to stay ahead, but Julian Godfrey is getting closer and closer to the back of O'Donovan. Higgins goes for the joker. This is Godfrey's opportunity to try and find a way past the yellow Ford. They will both close on the leader, but Mark Higgins stays ahead as they stand on the brakes at Paddock. Wriggling their way now through the right, left, and then into the hairpin. Mark Higgins looks as though this is going to be two out of two in Q1 and Q2 for him. Up through the gears, and then stand on the brakes, down through the box, the sequential gearbox, into the Brooklyn's hairpin. Ollie O'Donovan runs in second spot, and right there behind him, look, Julian Godfrey, but he's running out of time and running out of options as Mark Higgins charges his way up towards the chequered flag. Mark Higgins wins Q1 and Q2 here at Pembroke. Ollie O'Donovan is second. Third goes to Julian Godfrey ahead of the fourths of Kevin Proctor. And then Roger Thomas in fifth. A DNF in Q1, broken steering, but a, a better time in Q2. Yeah, yeah, much better time in Q2. Oz Q1 didn't finish it. Um, it broke the steering arm bolt, the, the M12 bolt, and from contact from, from Kevin. And uh, so it couldn't complete that heat. But uh, a good run in the second heat. Um, I'm not sure where I'm on the 30 on the grid now, but hopefully nearer to the front and uh, try, and, try and really just get on the front row for the final. Roger Thomas, fantastic start in Q1, led your race and you seem to be going pretty well today. Yeah, it was good, really good start. Everything sort of just, just worked and happened. Um, yeah, and try and build on that. Q2, not so good. Um, just overcooked it a few times, sort of lost a bit of confidence and just never really recovered fully. Um, I'll try and, try and have a repeat of Q1 in Q3. We're ready for Q3 here at Pembrey, day two of our double header weekend in the Toyo Tires. MSA British running cross championship lights go green. Good start by Julian Godfrey round the outside in 51. And look at the blue Mitsubishi. Steve Hill goes for a gap on the inside, gains ground. Wow, that's Hill off the road. Somehow, Steve Hill avoids making contact with anybody. But that was close. Look at the replay. Mark Higgins leads. O'Donovan goes to the outside. Proctor there. Kevin Proctor gets into Julian Godfrey. And Steve Hill, possibly with contact. Yes, it was contact. Somehow threads the eye of the needle. Goes up the escape road. How on earth he avoided hitting anybody? Well, it looked like this. There's the bang from Proctor. He's on the grass. And look how close he was to wiping out both O'Donovan and Higgins. <sighs> That was a real code brown moment for Steve Hill. That was an enormous laundry bill in that car as he gets going again. But the good news is he is still going and so is everybody else. There are quite a few dog-eared cars. Julian Godfrey and Kevin Proctor's amongst them. But now Ollie O'Donovan yet again is chasing after Mark Higgins who is having a stellar day here at Pembrey. Puncture and damage hit him hard yesterday. Higgins needs the points here and he leads from the Ford Focus, the Tony Bardi prepared car of Ollie O'Donovan in second place. It might be an old car, but it's still an effective one. Kevin Proctor missed yesterday, was only ever intending to be here today, Sunday, and now he is on the money, getting closer to the pack ahead. In the dust, Julian Godfrey is somewhere on the joker lap. And O'Donovan is way off the road there, penduluming his way back onto the circuit. Big moment for O'Donovan. You see now as they come across the loose, there's only really one line anymore. Gravel gets swept to the outside, it almost becomes another tarmac line, but you don't want to go off that, otherwise you're on the much slower line. O'Donovan then, through the Brooklyn's hairpin, into Toyo's, but look at the way that Mark Higgins is already away and gone. Through they turn, Kevin Proctor in the Fiesta, breathing down the neck of Ollie O'Donovan in the Ford Focus as they drop now towards Ollie's. This is O'Donovan's view. Up the road ahead of him is Mark Higgins, and O'Donovan goes for the joker. Through the dust, runs a little bit wide, and Proctor goes with him. Kevin Proctor measuring his own pace here against O'Donovan as they come across the loose section. They're down towards Paddock, and then the hairpin. The gap, therefore, widens between first and second. Out of the hairpin, Proctor tries to squirt up the inside, can't do it. And there is Steve Hill, still going. 
but has he got another problem? I think he has. Steve Hill is heading for the paddock. There is Roger Thomas, who was on the podium yesterday here, had a really good run. But right now, he's fallen some way back as O'Donovan chases after Higgins. We're on the last lap, and it looks as though Mark Higgins may well be able to make it three out of three. He's gone for the Joker lap. But Higgins is going to take some stopping on the pace that he's showing today. He's in the lead again. And as they work now across the loose down towards Paddock, it is Mark Higgins, the race leader. Their second and third look. You've got Oli O'Donovan just being able to fend off the white fiesta of Kevin Proctor. But because they're squabbling over second place, it means that this man, Mark Higgins, is getting away. The Albatech Racing Peugeot having a great day at Pembrey is a win in the final on the cards. Each race he's done, he's won. Mark Higgins for the chequered flag and another victory. In Q3, it's Mark Higgins ahead of Audio Donovan and then Kevin Proctor. Mark Higgins, the winner from Audio Donovan and Kevin Proctor with Julian Godfrey fourth and Roger Thomas fifth. Steve Hill, sadly, a retirement after his early dramas. Steve, your guy's got the car back out for Q3, but a huge moment in the first corner. <laughs> Might have been better if I didn't make a good start, but yeah, I got in the middle of it and um, I got a tap from Kevin, I think, and then uh, that rotated me a bit. Got away with that, and then suddenly Julian in my door as well. So I don't actually know what happened after that. We're just lucky to avoid a really bad accident. You didn't finish the race, but still, uh, with the entry here, a good position in the final. Yeah, um, there was no point in finishing the race. I was last and uh, the car wasn't handling very well, the rear suspension was bent, so uh, I thought best pull in, give the boys a chance to fix it for the final. Mark Higgins, a pretty dominant display from you today, fastest again in qualifying three and pole position for the final. Yeah, I mean today's gone really well, we've had a clean, clean runs, a bit of space to play with, uh, the car and the team's been working great, so... But as you know in this game, it all means nothing until we get to the final and we don't get any points for the heat, so we just want to get a good start, that's the key, and if we can sort of get in front, hopefully, you know, we'll let the action go on behind us this time. Um, unlike what would happen on, uh, on round four. So, yeah, fingers crossed for a nice clean run and uh, end the day on a bit of a high. Kevin, your return to the British Rallycross Championship this weekend. You've been right in the thick of it today. Another small incident at the start of Q3. Yeah, I think um, the problem is with the circuit that they've just done, everything's turning left into a smaller gap. I, I don't think it was my fault, but I think I was in the thick of it. So, um, just kept going. Me, uh, Steve and Julian had a bit of a coming together and I just tried to pick the pieces up. I've not seen the grid for the final yet, but you'll be on the second row, I guess. What can you do from there? Win it. No, I've just got to try my best and just get on and a uh, few more laps to go at and, you know, just try and do what we can. It's not just the supercars, though, here this weekend. There is Super National and Super 1600, another fiercely competitive grid. Tristan Uppenden, reigning champion. He was fastest in Q1 ahead of Jack Thorne and Paige Bellaby back to full strength in the Lotus X Siege. Uppenden was quickest again in Q2. It was Thorne and Bellaby, second and third. We're ready now for Q3. The first of two races then in Q3 for the Super Nationals and Super 1600s. Guy Corner in the Peugeot, the man on pole position, makes a decent start. Slavomir Volog in the rear wheel drive Fiesta, the Polish driver muscles its way up on the inside there, look to go ahead of the car of Craig Lomax and a big lockup from Kurt Twyman as they turn now uh, through Ollies for the first time. Now Guy Corner, the man from North Allerton in that very spectacular Peugeot, looks like he might be able to get away as Volok gets the Joker out of the way early doors here. Super National Peugeot versus Super 1600 spec behind him. Guy Corner ahead of Craig Lomax who straight away is closing up onto Guy Corner. Back onto the power, accelerating along that straight, up now towards Brooklyn's hairpin. Guy Corner it is, trying to build the advantage and doing so. But remember, a Super National car, largely quicker than Super 1600. Although that said, they have been very evenly matched this year and we've had some giant killing results out of Super 1600 machinery. But there, whoops, Lomax onto the grass, big slide. Hits the brakes, gathers it all up again. And that loses momentum, loses pace as well. Over the loose they come. Nobody jokers this time out of that leading duo. Kirk Twyman in the Renault Clio is next up. As there, look, Lomax works his way across that loose, down towards Paddock once again. Slavomir Volok has got that joker lap out of the way. And so now the Epping base driver starts to get himself not only up and past Kirk Twyman, but pulling away from the Nottingham driver. 
So there is Von Reich. It's a very, very smart car, that Fiesta, the rear-wheel drive Fiesta, and it gets increasingly competitive each time out. And the move this year to put Super 1600 and Super National together has resulted in not only some good grids, but very good racing indeed. Last lap then of this first of the two races within Q3. Bollock hard at work. There is Guy Corner up the road ahead. And Craig Lomax tiptoes his way as the best of the Super 1600s in this race out of the Carter's hairpin. Back onto the power and now up through the gears. Guy Corner looks as though he's going to be on target for a race win, but is it enough for the best time in Q3? That is more important to him. Checkered flag is going to be waved shortly. Guy Corner it is that takes the victory. Second is Craig Lomax. The grid is formed for our second race in Q3. Light blink green and a good getaway is made. Look by Tristan Ovenden from pole position. But Paige Bellaby in the Lotus tries to go around the outside. Darren Scott is there. Jack Thorne, the Silverstone winner, is there as well. Stand on the brakes and turn right into Ollie's. Bit of contact. Whoops. Paul Coney being assaulted. That was Darren Scott that got into the side of him. Both are delayed against the Super Nationals up the road ahead of them here. Tristan Lovenden it is through the dust. And look, all the gravel swept to one side there. You can see how much quicker the road is getting. Jack Thorne hanging onto the back of the train. There is Paul Coney's now rather bruised Vauxhall Corsa VXR. And the leader, Tristan Avenden, on a part of the circuit, that long straight where the power of this V6 Renault Clio really tells and he can go storming away, is getting away. Paige Bellaby is next up, and then it's Jack Thorne, look, in third place. But these two are squabbling for second, while the leader makes good his escape. Thorne to the inside line through Senna's, and he's going to go through. Jack Thorne goes second, and so Paige Bellaby drops one spot in this Honda engine Lotus X Siege. Early season rounds done in a borrowed Vauxhall VX220, now back at the wheel of a car with which he has had great success. But look at the way that Jack Thorne is going now. Having gained a place, he's charging on behind Tristan Ovenden. Lots of understeer from Paul Coney, hugely experienced driver, very successful too in Super 1600 machinery, both in the UK and in mainland Europe. Ovenden comes through the Brooklyn's hairpin into Toyos ahead of Jack Thorne. It was Thorne who was victorious yesterday. There was contact in the final between Thorne and Ovenden. Is it going to be another fierce fight between the two when we get to the final later on in the day? We will see. Across the loose comes Jack Thorne. Tristan Ovenden, the race leader. Thorne working hard, the bark of that engine. The V6 Clio also makes a very distinctive engine note and it's about to wail its way up the straight. Speedway straight it is towards the Brooklyn's hairpin here. The gap widens between the two, so it's got to be on bravery, brakes and the twiddly bits where Jack Thorne claws back the time. Tristan Ovenden then leans on the suspension as he comes through Toyos, back onto the power. He will go over the line and then on towards Senna's, which in turn loops him round towards Ollie's. There is Paige Bellaby. Sister Drew is here as well this weekend, doing great things in the BMW Mini Challenge. But onto the loose section she will turn as Tristan Ovenden looks as though it is going to be another race win and with it a best time. Now there is Jack Thorne ahead on the Joker lap. Tristan Ovenden has Joker. Jack Thorne stays ahead now. Just checking. Jack Thorne has not yet served the Joker and we're running out of time in this race. If you don't Joker, you get a 30-second penalty. Paige Bellamy hasn't jokered either. So here is Jack Thorne up through the Brooklyn's hairpin, heading towards Toyos. But has he forgotten about it? Or is he gambling? Or is this brain fade or what? Jack Thorne takes the flag. He wins on the road ahead of Tristan Ovenden and Paige Bellamy. But two out of the top three didn't go for the joker lap. 30-second penalties applied, and it means that Tristan Ovenden wins from Guy Corner in terms of time within Q3. And it also means that Thorne and Bellamy are going to be on the back foot. But it's three out of three for Tristan Ovenden. A great way to go now into the finals. As ever, within the Toyo Tyres MSA British Rallycross Championship, the MSA Junior Rallycross contenders have been giving great entertainment. 
Luke Constantine has been quickest in each of the three qualifying runs. Tom Constantine and then cousin James also up front. Six laps of action, ready to go. This, the MSA Junior Rallycross Championship Final. Luke Constantine is on pole position. Tom Constantine and then cousin James with him at the front, ahead of Ben Sayer and Morgan Root. Then it is uh, Christiana Haval Enger, Marius Solberg, Hansen and Archie Thomas completing the grid as we go racing. And a good start made by Luke Constantine. He was only fourth yesterday. Can he come out on top here? Let's see. Different configuration of circuit today. You're running it in the anti-clockwise direction, so it is right at Ollie's and then straight on towards the loose. There is James Constantine in the green and black car, elbowing his way up the inside, a straight away. One or two go for the Joker to get that out of the way. Then they can concentrate on pure race pace. Up front then, 107 is Luke Constantine. He was on pole position and he leads the way now. There is Ben Sayer going through. He was seventh in yesterday's final. He's got James Constantine just up the road ahead of him as they go to the hairpin. So it's the brothers, Luke and Tom, that lead the way. Luke is ahead only just, though. Tom Constantine, the championship leader and three times a winner this season. He is the man behind. That's three out of four rounds. Don't forget that he has won. Ben Sayer, though, looking very racy today. He's gone one in qualifying. Number 77, Ben Sayer. There he is looking the red, white and blue car. Seventh yesterday, but fourth on the grid and running fourth in the race, showing good speed. And he's on the tail of James Constantine. The track has been watered in readiness for the finals. It means it's a little bit slippery, but it does keep down the dust. And there, bouncing through Paddock, where again, all the gravel has been swept to one side, is an understeering Luke Constantine. He just gets it all slowed up in time. But is Tom going to be able to make a move against his brother? The answer is no. He couldn't quite get the speed coming out of the corner, and it means that Luke Constantine leads. James Constantine is now closing up for second place. Has Tom got a problem? Let's see. Out of the Brooklyn's hairpin. Look, you can see the way the gap has come right down. Second and third here. The championship leader running second on the road may be in strife. There is Ben Sayer, who has dropped a place by the look of it, as now James Constantine comes up on the inside, takes the place away. Second place, that is, away from Cousin Tom. So the battles rage on with Marius Solberg Hansen, the Silverstone round winner, now in fourth place. For the Joker lap goes Tom Constantine. And now James has got to try and push on, build up that gap to preserve when he jokers late in the race. Ben Sayer now gets himself up past Tom Constantine. There is James getting all sideways. Solberg Hansen is next in the queue. There's a lot going on in this race. Suzuki Swift, the car that everybody must use. They're relatively low powered, low speed. Momentum is crucial. And again, look, there's just no drive out of the hairpin for Tom Constantine. That's what we saw a lap ago. It means he's still struggling. It means he's got no real speed coming out of the corner and he's easy prey for the opposition. He's losing place after place and crucially, therefore, point after point. James Constantine comes down to the left at Ollie's. That will, in turn, take him towards the loose section of circuit. Over it he turns now, towards the Joker lap. And he's going to lose places as there, look, Maria Solberg Hansen, the Silverstone winner, picks up more ground. And this is good for Solberg Hansen, place by place, point by point, working his way up the order. Ben Sayer, likewise, is going with him. So Ben Sayer having a much more competitive day today. Solberg Hansen, though, was second in yesterday's race. The fact that he was on the back of the grid, something of a surprise, really, given the speed that we know he's got. Are things turning around for him? It looks a little bit more optimistic now. And now there's another one in trouble, and it's Morgan Root by the look of it. Smoke from the back of the car. Morgan Root, third yesterday. Looks like he's not even going to get to the end today. He pulls the car onto the escape road there at Toyo's, and he is a retirement, yeah. as now Ben Sayer makes his way through, but that is sadly the end of Morgan Root. Very smoky, and he's out of the race. He will still pick up points for being, effectively, the eighth-place driver, but not as many points as he would have needed. Now here, in the meantime, Marius Solberg Hansen is closing on the race leader. Tom Constantine is under attack from Archie Thomas. And let's just see what develops coming out of this loose section onto Speedway Straight, because that is traditionally where Tom Constantine just loses all the power. Final few corners for Luke Constantine. Finally, it is going to be a win for him.
He's tried so hard, fourth yesterday, but now for the top step of the podium, Luke Constantine wins in the MSA Junior Rallycross Championship for the first time. Luke Constantine is a winner ahead of Marius Solberg Hansen. Ben Sayer takes third, James Constantine fourth ahead of Christiana Havar Enger, and then a trouble Tom Constantine in sixth. As far as the championship is concerned, it is still Tom ahead of Luke. Marius Solberg Hansen third with James Constantine fourth. Ben say a fifth and down to six, Morgan Root. And your first victory in the MSA Junior Rallycross Championship in your first season. Yeah, really good race in the end. Uh, a close battle with Tom at the start of the race, but then obviously his gearbox, gearbox went on the second lap, so I pulled away a bit. And then after that, I just kept got my head down, kept on pulling away, and then joked on the last lap and came out with the win. Marius, another brilliant drive in the Junior Final, took the joker on the first lap and that got you to the podium. Yeah, I'm very, um, very happy with that. And what did you think of the, the circuit here at Pembrey, different to round four? Yeah, I think this uh, end turn the circuit is much better. Yeah, you're new to the MSA British Rallycross Championship in the junior category this year, but another really good drive, another hard-fought final and another podium. Yeah, it was a great race, but intense. But I couldn't have done it without all the support. And I hope we do well at Croft. This promises to be an epic battle. The MSA Super National and the Super 1600 Rally Cross Championship Final. Tristan Ovenden, Paul Coney, Jack Thorne, row one. Guy Corner, Paige Bellamy, row two, ahead of Darren Scott, Kurt Twyman and Craig Lomax. Lights go green, it's blast off. Great start by Paige Bellamy. Away like a robber's dog, goes for a gap, finds it, and is second at turn one from the second row of the grid. Absolute dynamite start. Paul Coney under attack from Jack Thorne. They turn their way out of Ollie's for the first time towards the loose section. Tristan Ovenden it is then, the Clio dwarfing the Lotus behind as here drivers head for the Joker for the first time. Kirk Twyman spins ahead of Craig Lomax, he's delayed. Jack Thorne gets the Joker out of the way as well. Darren Scott there is on the back of Guy Corner, out of the hairpin, onto the tarmac, up, up, up through the gears now. You're on board with Paige Bellamy. So after that demon start, she's in second place. Kirk Twyman, though, the Joker, is still facing the wrong way. He's going to get going, but that's his race. Effectively ruined. He's lost the best part of a lap. Can Bellamy do anything about the leader? Paul Coney there in third place, going after her. Towards the loose. Paul Coney here has got now Jack Thorne, the man that won at Silverstone behind. He goes for the Joker. More and more Joker to get that out of the way. Tristan Ovenden, it is then, in the lead. Paige Bellaby second, and she's now coming under attack. Working hard behind the wheel of the Lotus. Wide out of the hairpin. Coney closing. Guy Corner is fourth. Darren Scott fifth. That is Jack Thorne. He's done the Joker lap, remember. Now he's got to try and go after the others, bring down the gaps, and inherit the places when they peel off and serve the Joker rather than the normal lap. Bellaby second, Coney third. Battle on, look, it is the Lotus ahead of the Vauxhall. On board with Paige Bellaby. Sequential box in this Honda engine Lotus. Pushes it away to go down a gear. Coney looks for a way past, but to no avail as yet. Paul Coney goes straight on effectively there. That's the Joker lap, so he will lose time. But of course, everybody has to Joker. And now, look, the two very different Clios. The rather more standard looking car of Kirk Twyman is about to be lapped by the race leader after his early spin. Kirk Twyman now will go a lap down. There is Guy Corner under attack from Jack Thorne. Thorne joked early on, but he's still got a lot of traffic to find a way past. But remember, these are longer races, six laps now. Guy Corner sideways through Toyos. Jack Thorne bearing down on him. Jack, one-time supercar driver, limited budget, but the Renault Twingo is going strongly here. He's had a good season, what with a win yesterday, and a win at Silverstone at the very start of the season in those Arctic conditions. Locks the rears as he closes right onto the tail. Here, look, of Guy Corner. Tristan Avendon has still not lapped. Kirk Twyman, intriguingly, is that giving Paige Bellaby a chance to close? Third and fourth, corner ahead of Thorne. And Jack gets just a little bit crossed up there, a little bit wide, and that loses him a couple of lengths onto speedway straight. Ovenden is now ahead of Kirk Twyman. There is Bellaby second, but it's still quite a big gap that she's got to make up. 
Guy Corner as ever throwing everything at this. He's always a spectacular driver. Jack Thorne is behind him. The Renault Twingo hustles on, trying to bring down that gap so he can have another go for third place. And he does close, gate towards Ollies. Runs out of road and then he can't find a gap. Guy Corner jokers, thank you very much. There's an understeering Jack Thorne. And I think Bellaby has joked as well. She has, so suddenly Jack Thorne is up into second place. It's looking good for Renault. This is the Clio ahead of the Twingo. There is Jack Thorne back to tarmac. Bellaby third. Fourth is Coney now. Fifth is Corner. And sixth is Darren Scott. That is the order after that recent Joker lap run. On board with Paige Bellaby. Seventh yesterday here. It's going to be better, certainly. But Tristan Lavender, that didn't even finish yesterday's race, is the race leader today. And looks like he's going to be a winner. But Jack Thorne, look, is absolutely on the limit. Thorne throwing everything at this to try to get himself back onto terms. Guy Corner, in the meantime, is right there now, look, with Craig Lomax. This battle is set to go right down to the wire as well. Kurt Twyman's lap for Renault ahead of them. Across the loose they come once again. There is Paige Bellaby looking good for the podium. But for the race win, is it going to be Tristan Ovenden or Jack Thorne? Now, of course, the power kicks in of the big V6 Clio. With its three-litre engine, Tristan Ovenden in the car that's absolutely immaculate despite contact and damage yesterday. Out of Brooklands, through Toyos, up towards the finish line. It's going to be a win for Tristan Ovenden. That is his third of the season. Jack Thorne takes second and Paige Bellaby is going to be third. Fourth will go the way of Paul Coney ahead of Guy Corner. A great drive for Tristan Ovenden. He wins by three seconds from Jack Thorne ahead of Paige Bellaby third. Then it is Paul Coney from Guy Corner and Darren Scott. In the championship now, Ovenden to Thorne. That gap is widening. 17 points with Paige Bellaby third. In Super 1600, it's Craig Lomax ahead of Jack Thorne and then Paul Coney. Tristan Ovenden, a really, really tough day for you here at Pembrey in round four of the MSA British Rallycross Championship, but a, a fighting return in round five and a victory to go with it. Yeah, yesterday it was really dramatic from practice. We got through practice and then we had fuel pump issues with the, with the car. It's really unusual. It wasn't anything major either, just a wiring problem. But yeah, missed that, missed the second one, and then we're doing okay in the final, only for it to go wrong then as well. So today has <laughs> really made up for it. It's a circuit of two halves really, isn't it? The Super 1600 front wheel drive cars are really quick across the loose, but you can really put the power down on the straights and, and pull away. Yeah, it is. Really, so, more so I think today, going the other way around. I think perhaps it is, it's a bit tighter, so it's helped them a little bit more. I think we probably preferred it yesterday, but it's, it's been good though. It's been really good. Paige Bellaby, you came back with your Lotus here at Pembroke for the double header. A tough time in round four, but a podium in round five. You must be delighted with that. Yeah, really chuffed with the end result. Um, we didn't really know what to expect when we came after not doing any testing and just putting the car together. The most that we'd done was on the hub dyno. So, um, yeah, came with a, an open mind and come away smiling in the end. And a good result. Can you fight for this championship or is Tristan eking ahead a little too much? I'm not too sure if it'll be something I can fight for this year. I won't give up trying, obviously, but uh, we come here to have fun and I'm enjoying every minute of it. Your home circuit next time out, you always do really well at Croft, so you must be looking forward to that. Yeah, I always look forward to being, going back home to Croft, and it's definitely a track that I think that if I can win at any of them, then it will be that one, so fingers crossed. Jack Thorne, another really close battle between you and Tristan in the final. Really close merge at the Joker lap, but you couldn't quite get the win today. Not quite. One more lap maybe would have done it, but that's always the story. Um, yeah, pushed hard, Joker's on the first lap, bit of traffic for a bit in the middle of the race, but did have clean air. Christian come out on top, he drove better, um, the power may have helped but we did try, yeah, gave it all. Interesting circuit this isn't it, you're all over him on the loose sections and you just can't quite get that, you don't have the power to get down on the, on the long straights, must make it frustrating and fun at the same time. It is frustrating, yeah, it does make for good racing I guess, spectators, but um, yeah, on the loose, could do a being in front to pull a bit of a gap, but um, on, on the straight, yeah, the, uh, the Twingo can't quite look at the power of that, but it's not to be expected from the from the little car, so, yeah. We're getting ready for the supercar final. Mark Higgins has been the man to beat all day. In Q1, it was a lively opener. Higgins threaded his way through the traffic, also benefiting from a big Ford Focus fight between Ollie O'Donovan and Roger Thomas. Higgins, fastest in Q1. 
When we got to Q2, he was the man to beat again. Julian Godfrey battled early doors with Ollie O'Donovan, but as the scraps continued, Mark Higgins was the fastest. And high drama at the start of Q3 that very nearly eliminated everybody. Higgins was avoided by an errant Steve Hill, and guess what? He was a race winner again. It means that after qualifying, Mark Higgins will be top. He has taken the fastest time in each of the three qualifying runs. And so a six-lap final is good to go with Higgins on pole, Ollie O'Donovan second on the grid, Roger Thomas on the front row. Row two, Kevin Proctor will line up alongside Julian Godfrey and it's Steve Hill at the back of the grid. Mark Higgins has had one win this year, two to Ollie O'Donovan, one of which was yesterday. And of course, Julian Godfrey took maximum points at Silverstone. The lights will go green any second. Now it is blast off and a good start by O'Donovan. That is going to be absolutely crucial. Mark Higgins almost into the back of him. Kevin Proctor elbowing his way up on the inside of Roger Thomas as they break for Ollies. But O'Donovan has done it. O'Donovan leads the way. Thomas is all sideways, losing out to Proctor and Godfrey. Ollie O'Donovan leads the way. Kevin Proctor goes for the Joker lap. And now multiple British rally champion Mark Higgins has got a lot of work to do to try to find his way up past Ollie O'Donovan. Many more years of rallycross knowledge in the yellow Ford Focus compared to the green and white Albatech Peugeot. What can Higgins do now about O'Donovan? We've seen plenty of others go for the Joker and get that out of the way early on, such as Proctor and Hill and Thomas. Godfrey then chases Higgins, Higgins chases O'Donovan, but Ollie O'Donovan is in the box seat, no question. The London-based Irishman leads the way. Mark Higgins there in second spot. The Manxman hustling on behind him as they come to the loose. Higgins, winner at Lynn yesterday, didn't finish and therefore scored badly. He desperately wants another victory here because otherwise O'Donovan's going to be getting away in the championship, especially if O'Donovan wins this race. This is Higgins' view then as they come back onto the loose. having Joker stays ahead of Kevin Proctor. There is Steve Hill in the background. It's been a bit of a mixed day, but a very good result yesterday for him to take second with Roger Thomas third. Thomas has got work to do here, of course. He's more competitive today, arguably, with Kevin Proctor in the entry, but Proctor has just run way out wide there at the Brooklyn's hairpin, and that cost him a whole heap of time. Over the timing line, through centres. Proctor's off the road, and round he goes! The leader O'Donovan has jokered, there he is, but Kevin Proctor has thrown it away. Too much speed on a new circuit to him, runs onto the grass and loses it. So the order changes again. Julian Godfrey now leads behind Ollie O'Donovan and then it's Mark Higgins. Higgins right up behind O'Donovan, can he find a way by? Up through the gears they go, a long speedway straight into the Brooklyn's hairpin. Down to second gear, turn left, O'Donovan ready to hook another gear if he needs to. Everywhere Mark Higgins wants to be, O'Donovan is there in anticipation, places the car just in as far as Higgins is concerned, the wrong place. Higgins takes a tighter line there through centres towards Ollis, closes the gap, but he's not really able there, look, to find a way by. Through they turn, across the loose section of the circuit. Julian Godfrey now goes for the joker lap, gets that out of the way as the race leaders sprint through Paddock, down to the hairpin. O'Donovan has got better drive out of the corner. It's evident again. This is Julian Godfrey's view. Up speedway straight now. Steve Hill falling a long way back at the rear of the train. But O'Donovan and Higgins, they are at the corners, are inseparable. But O'Donovan just seems to have a bit more get up and go in a straight line. Look at Higgins now. Everything thrown at this corner. Foot nailed to the boards, closing right up onto the tail of O'Donovan. onto the loose section now, nose to tail. The gap just 0.281 of a second last time, Higgins tries everywhere, but there's never really a gap, and of course here the peril is, you go offline, you're slower because of all the earth that's been swept onto the outside line, out of Carter's hairpin, up, 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 through the gears goes O'Donovan, way out wide goes Julian Godfrey, mows the lawn, there is Steve Hill behind. Higgins again hurls the car up towards the Brooklyn's hairpin, now through Toyos. But O'Donovan, who is absolutely focused on that mirror, knows absolutely where he has to put the car. They're on the last lap. Higgins has tried everything but to no avail. 
little bit deep into the corner there as he had to come off the throttle. Meantime, there's another good fight going on, and that is between Kevin Proctor and Roger Thomas. Out of the hairpin, they now turn. Thomas drifts out wide, and he's going to scrub off speed in the process. Down towards Paddock, Higgins needs somehow to get up the inside coming out of the hairpin, but O'Donovan slows the car down on the apex, and that means Higgins can't get up the inside. O'Donovan now powers away. It looks as though it's going to be a third victory in five rounds for Ollie O'Donovan. Higgins, after his puncture yesterday, at least will score points, but he wanted a win. He needed a win for the championship, and it's not going to happen. Ollie O'Donovan is a happy man. He wins. It's two out of two at Pembrey for Ollie O'Donovan. Second goes the way of Mark Higgins, and Julian Godfrey comes through with Steve Hill behind in the Mitsubishi. It has been an action-packed day of racing, no question about it. O'Donovan celebrates a double at Pembrey. Well done, Ollie O'Donovan. Two out of two this weekend. Let's confirm the race result. First of all, Ollie O'Donovan, the winner from Mark Higgins and Julian Godfrey third. Steve Hill bags fourth, ahead of Kevin Proctor and Roger Thomas. Ollie O'Donovan, a fantastic start in the final. You haven't been at the front all day, but you were at the front when it mattered and commanded the final. Yeah, yeah, we were happy with that. I mean, the same thing happened in the last round. We didn't make the pole any pole, so we sat in the line today. We took a bit of a long shot, uh, but, um, you know, we done it last round, we done it again in this round. New tyres for the final, did that make all the difference? It did, Hal, it made a difference. I mean, I sat in the line with my new tyres, and then I looked over and I see Mark and new tyres as well. So I thought, oh, it might be hard, you know, but we just got to jump and we got away with it. And you had to defend really hard from Mark, but it was very fair and very close. Uh, to be fair, Mark drove very clean. Uh, I controlled it from the front, I had Bardi in my ear. Uh, we launched down the tarmac where we knew he'd be quicker than me. But on the gravel, I just took, took the line and didn't leave any gaps open. You've been talking about consistency all year, haven't you? I don't think you meant consistently winning in a car that is arguably older than some of the competitors, so fantastic for your championship. Yeah, yeah and we're very happy. I mean, it proves an old car, and I mean, we, we put it away a year and a half ago and dragged it out again this year. Uh, still a good car, so no, we were lucky. I mean, you know, it was a good event. Yeah, there's new cars out there, but you still got to get around and have a little bit of luck. Mark Higgins, a dominant performance in qualifying here at Pembrey. Didn't quite make the start. Ollie got ahead of you, and you pushed super hard to try and get by. Yeah, um, it was just a start really, unfortunately. I mean, Ollie got an amazing start. Uh, we've had good starts pretty well all through the heats. But um, on the final, he just got away and uh, unfortunately there's no way to get past. And it was a nice clean race, uh, which is good. But uh, unfortunately, not the result we wanted. We could have done with the first here, to be honest. Um, Ollie's got a good little lead in the championship now. So we're on the back foot, but it's going to be a challenge for the next one. He's pretty wily, isn't he? You're all over him on the twisty sections on the loose and just backed you up enough to, to make it hard coming out of the slow corners. Yeah, I mean, coming out of the, the, down the long straight, he, he was taking three three cars off us down there. Then we could sort of catch him up and we were close to him, but uh, he knew where to put the car. It's a big old car, that Focus. So uh, there was no room to get round without being um, aggressive. So uh, we, we stuck behind and waited for him to make a mistake. But unfortunately, he didn't make a big enough one. So um, yeah, a second will take that. And it's, it's points for the championship after a bad day yesterday. Uh, a close battle in the final, Julian, with, with Kevin on the first lap and a third place finish. You must be happy with that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been a, been a really tough day today, and uh, but uh, yeah, so the car felt real good. Um, I was a, just didn't make it. Had a really pace in the final, and then I had a problem. With part of the brake light moulding broke off the rear brakes and kept sticking under my throttle pedal stop, so the throttle kept sticking open. So I had to turn the power off and on to uh, keep the other car under control and uh, keep kicking the old pedal until it comes out again. So it was a bit of a a fighting battle in there for the final, so I lost a bit of time in the last three laps. We found the piece of plastic that come from the rear brake lights moulding, so uh, that was the cause. So what does today do to the championship? It means Ollie O'Donovan stretches that margin over Mark Higgins. Julian Godfrey is third ahead of Steve Hill. Roger Thomas fifth ahead of Mad Mark. And the action will continue. The next stop for the championship is back up to Croft.